Hi everybody, it's good to be here with you. I'm Pastor Renee and it's another beautiful day. There's a lot going on in our world and how are we getting through it? Hopefully with studying and reading the Word of God and being in prayer. There's a lot of good things. Spring is here. All things are blooming and flourishing. And then there's a lot of devastating things. And so be with one another. Lift one another up. I hope this message is uplifting for you. And uh, I'll begin now with the reading of our Holy Scripture today from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. While they were talking about this, and I'll get to that shortly, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And here ends today's reading, so the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so today's gospel lesson from the book of Luke is similar to John's depiction that we heard from last week in, uh, in the message I delivered. When Jesus appeared to his remaining disciples for the first time after his resurrection from the dead. Now the most obvious difference is that Luke didn't mention that Thomas was absent when this took place. Nonetheless, in Luke's account, the disciples were discussing an incredible experience that happened to Cleopas and his companion as they walked to Emmaus. Now here's what I was talking about at the beginning of the scripture reading while they were talking about this as the scripture began. And so let me give you a little refresher on the walk to Emmaus. On the day that Jesus' tomb was found to be empty, Cleopas and his companion were walking to a town called Emmaus. And Cleopas and his companion were both followers of Jesus, although not, uh, not one of the twelve disciples. But as they were walking to this town, a man... Uh, started walking with them. And he revealed to them in their conversation together the fulfillment of scripture that had taken place in Jesus' sacrificial death and resurrection from the dead. And so when they got to Emmaus and they had enjoyed his teaching so much and it was getting dark out and they were concerned for his safety on those those roads. They invited him to stay with them as, you know, would be customary. And it wasn't until 
they sat for a meal with him that they realized the man was actually Jesus that had been traveling with them. And when they realized this and Jesus suddenly vanished from their sight, they headed right back to Jerusalem to share their news with the disciples and the other followers. And as they were sharing their account with those followers, Jesus appeared to them. And this time, it doesn't mention that Jesus was somehow disguised as someone else. Remember, both on the road to Emmaus and at the empty tomb, when he appeared to Mary Magdalene, Jesus looked like someone else until he did something that revealed himself to them. At the tomb, Jesus called Mary by her name, and she recognized him as one, at once. And at the dinner table in Emmaus, when Jesus blessed the bread and broke it and gave it to the two men, that's when their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Both times, it had, if, sorry, both times, it had to have felt as if Mary and Cleopas and his friend had been dreaming. Imagine, having a conversation with someone that you don't know, and then suddenly this person turns into someone you love. See, that only happens to me in dreams. Luckily, that only happens to me in dreams. I mean, it would be absolutely crazy circumstance for it to happen while I'm awake. And you know, as crazy and miraculous as that was, Showing himself from the onset did not prove to be any easier for his followers to handle. Was Jesus looking for maybe the easiest way to show people that he had risen from the dead? I don't know. He tried the disguise and that scared people. <laughs> so he tried showing up as himself. And that scared people too, because when he appeared to the disciples and their companions that night, he appeared as himself and then frightened them because they thought they were seeing a ghost. And who can blame them? Probably where my mind would have gone as well. So I think it's safe to say there wasn't any way to let his followers know that he had risen from the dead without frightening them, or making them shudder in disbelief. This wasn't a dream or a nightmare, though. It was real. And it was a real shock. Because their teacher, their master, the one whom they would come to confess as their savior, had been resurrected from the dead. Not wanting them to be frightened or have doubts as to whether what they were seeing was real, he even said to them, Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And as he wanted there to be even more clarity for them, he asked for something to eat. And he ate some broiled fish, which is a very alive and very human thing to do. Because he wanted them to know they weren't dreaming. They weren't having some mass hallucination. He wasn't a ghost. He was real. He was alive. And then he did something that I wish we could all be blessed with. But he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. How wonderful would it be if we could all understand the scriptures as they were intended for us to know their truth, instead of leaving it up to us for our own translations. But that's a completely different sermon, by the way. But Jesus also 
explained how the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets and the psalms with, that were all written about him, he explained to them how all of them had to be fulfilled. None of the disciples had realized before that Jesus was the fulfillment of so many prophecies and scripture. If there had been doubt in any of his followers' minds before, it was surely gone now, as these truths were now revealed to them. And remember when Jesus would tell his disciples to keep their knowledge of who he really was to themselves? Or he'd heal somebody and tell them, don't speak a word of this to anyone. Well, he now let the disciples know that the time for keeping it to themselves was now over. It would be their mission to tell the great good news to all once they were filled with the Holy Spirit, or, as Jesus put it, clothed with power from on high. Don't you love the way that sounds? I mean, we usually think of receiving the Holy Spirit as being filled with the Holy Spirit. But this is like, it gives us the imagery of an external thing that you can see when someone has the Holy Spirit encompassing them. And so when, when that's the case, who could possibly doubt the news that someone like that shares? The great good news they share would be received as so overwhelmingly wonderful that people might just believe they're dreaming. And that's when they can be assured, you aren't dreaming. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the best news that you have ever and that you will ever hear in your lifetime. Amen. And thanks be to God. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for another message. And I pray that all is well with you. Again, I say that. And uh, I pray that, you know, you are looking for ways all around you in which you can be filled with the Holy Spirit in which you can serve God. Thank you again, and God bless.